So we're well into our Bs now. We've, done, we've dealt with um, blood pressure, we've dealt with uh, BMI, we've dealt with breast cancer, and now on to B12, something that a lot of people don't give a lot of thought to, but can have a significant impact on patients' lives. Absolutely, James. Now, B12 deficiency, which is what we're going to largely talk about this afternoon, is something that I don't see very much of. Uh, in my clinical practice, but I think you do, isn't that correct? Yeah, surprisingly so actually. Just a bit of background on this setup we've got. Now this A to Z of the NHS is Andy's idea, but I come across B12 deficiency quite often, so I'm actually going to grab the mic from him here and lead on this one. I frequently see vitamin B12 deficiency because it comes up on a screen that we do when someone comes in saying they're feeling tired all the time. And there are lots of other things that we check for on that. We check for, you know, your iron levels and diabetes potentially. Um, but B12 is definitely one that comes up quite often. So why could that be? Why, why are people going to get vitamin B12 deficiencies? I think you've got a list for us, haven't you, Andy? There are three broad groups of causes of B12 deficiency. One is dietary. In other words, you don't take enough vitamin B12 in your diet. Another is to do with the absorption of B12 in the stomach and in your intestines. And a third is a rare autoimmune disease called pernicious anemia. Now I'm sure that some of you at home will have heard of pernicious anemia and thinking, where's that come from? One of the characters in Downton Abbey had it, but on that episode they were all very upset because he was going to die. Now, hold on, B12 deficiency doesn't seem to be that lethal if I'm, de if I'm dealing with it in GP land and not Andy in the hospitals. That's because since you know, then, we now can synthesise vitamin B12. So we need the vitamins normally to be taken into the body because our body can't produce them. And this is a perfect example of that. B12 is needed for our heart health, for our minds, for our memory, for our brains, and for the functioning of our nerves. Thus, if we are deficient in B12, we end up with all these insidious problems developing. And part of that comes up in the tired all the time screen, when we end up with a megaloblastic anemia. So throwing some big words at you there, what we're meaning is that the red blood cells have become bigger. There's two types of anemia we see. One is the iron deficiency anemia, often seen in pregnant ladies and things like that. There we're getting small blood cells. I always had difficulty at medical school keeping these in my head, so I always thought that with an iron deficiency, you literally can't build the girders to make a big enough blood cell, so you make smaller ones, and with vitamin B12 deficiency, you've had to blow up the uh, blood cell to cover for that deficiency. I have a very strange brain, just run with that. But those main changes that Andy's talked about, that deficiency with absorption, deficiencies with taking it in the diet, and also autoimmune things, we tend to see more often problems with the B12 due to absorption. So someone's come in with tired all the time, and we find out that they've got a problem with B12. So we then need to look at which of these causes why, and it tends to be the lack of absorption. Now, if we're going to go away from the doctor's clinic and actually to my home, my sister actually has problems with B12 deficiency because she has an autoimmune disease called Crohn's disease. There, her intestines essentially get attacked by her body, meaning they don't work very well. That means that the B12 she does eat, she can't absorb well. So she has to have injections of the B12 and everything's fine. But I can tell you, well, she can tell me more to the point, when her B12 levels are low because she feels tired all the time. She gets irritable and her memory really, really goes. So whilst B12 can, can have a significant impact on people, a simple injection can sort it out very easily. Absolutely, and I'm glad that she's feeling better. I think we need to backtrack a bit here, James, and just think about and talk about what a vitamin is. Now, a vitamin is an organic substance, that means it's got carbon in it, that is essential to the body. In other words, it's an essential nutrient. And most vitamins have to be taken 
through your diet. In other words, your body can't make them. And B12 is an example of one of those vitamins. In fact, it's a bit more than a vitamin. It's actually an essential nutrient, which is important in cell production and cell growth. The cells are the small building blocks of the body. It's important in nerve function, as you alluded to, and it's important in, in heart function. So it's a bit more than, than just a vitamin. I just wonder now whether we should talk a bit about the treatment of it. Uh, I think you know a bit more about this than me. So how would you treat somebody with B12 deficiency? So as we've mentioned, there are three problems that can give rise to vitamin B12 deficiency. So imagining that our body is a bucket, we've got a hole due to problems with absorption, or perhaps problems with autoimmune uh, diseases, or perhaps problems with uh, deficiencies in the diet. We don't know what that hole is, but when we've found someone is B12 deficient, we can put more B12, we can put more water in the bucket. It's a very simple injection, and to be honest, it actually looks like Ribena. We've got these bright red vials, and just pretty quickly put them in the arm. So I can deal with the patient with B12 deficiency by giving them these injections whilst we work out what's going on to fix this hole. Going back to my sister in case, so we give her her B12 injections, but with her, we're then looking to try and deal with her autoimmune condition, which is attacking her bowel, and when we get the control on the Crohn's disease, which we're probably going to deal with on C, that then heals and means her digestive system is able to absorb the B12. So in that particular example, we've got two causes there that we're affecting. Let's talk now about the treatment. As James says, the treatment's quite simple. If there is a severe B12 deficiency, injections can be given. It can also be given as a tablet. But we usually start with injections. Uh, and that may be an injection three times a week for two weeks, followed by three monthly injections, or in certain situations, those injections are six monthly. There may be things you can do to help yourself to boost B12 in your diet. I mentioned earlier, eggs, milk, nuts, Marmite is very good. Finally, I'd like to talk a bit about how to get information about B12 deficiency. Uh, when I was researching this bit of our uh, video today, uh, I in fact read my old textbooks, read a couple of review articles, and I also read both the NHS Choices and the NICE website on B12 deficiency. And I was really surprised how good they were, particularly NHS Choices. And I would encourage you all out there, if you think you've got a problem or you're just interested, start with NHS Choices. There's some great information out there uh, and it's reviewed at least every two years, sometimes more frequently. So it's up to date and reliable information. Are there any other sources of information that you recommend to your patients, James? Uh, one of the things that I don't recommend is a straightforward Dr. Google search. Uh, there's plenty of evidence to say that uh, Dr. Google is very good at saving lives, but not very good at protecting lives. Tends to worry a lot of people. Uh, patient advice website, patient.co.uk, uh, that is very, very good in terms of the setup for straightforward information. Um, but that will be my main source for the time being. Oh, one more thing, James, on B12 deficiency, folate. Mm. There's another chemical called folate out there, which is also an essential nutrient. And it in some ways goes with B12 and B12 deficiency. In other words, patients who are B12 deficient are often folate deficient as well. And many of those will need folate tablets as well as B12 injections. Both treatments are extremely safe. And if you need them, it's quite safe to take them over a period of months or years. Anything else we need to talk about today, James? No, I, I, th I think that's a wrap, other than to say thank you very much for joining us. 